Good morning, family. It is a fabulous day in the name of our Lord. And you might be saying, why? Because you're here. Because we all are here. And therefore, it is a day for us to rejoice. And that is what we are going to do. I first thank you for being here and ask that you help us destroy the works of the enemy in this hour by partnering with us by clicking that button and I thank you greatly. And today is that day that we are going to start celebrating life in the way that it has been gifted to us. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for life today. I thank you that we can move in the essence of it, that we can come before you, Father, rejoice, be glad, thankful. Father, I give you the praise and the glory for for every word that will be that of life and move with your breath into those who receive it. I praise you, Father. I thank you for your Holy Spirit filling this place today in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen and to God be the glory. And well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what do you do? You know, when, when I started looking at, at life and celebrating life, you know, it's been a rough go for for a bit of a season and you know when we really begin to reflect on the seasons that we've gone through and the times that we're in and where we're going come on you need to sit down sit down we need to really look at at what we're doing to celebrate life are we celebrating it or is it just moving so far fastly past us that we're not seeing it and so I've been, I, I've been in this reflective mode, kind of spiritually cleaning house and just looking at, at my own personal life and what's important and what it's not. And there's been a lot of garbage that needs to just be, be gone in many ways. And so the Lord revealed to me when I was asking about how do we describe life? And we know that life begins at conception, but conception begins in the mind and and so I share with you that life is living ignited for eternity. And, and the reason why I believe so many people are not living life is because they have nowhere that they're going when it's over. For them, this is the best that it's going to get. It, there is no better than the worst that they're living in. But for us, it's a whole new life for us in terms of where we're going. And so today I have six things that I want to share with you to help you really pause, reflect, and come back to the simplicity of the things of the Lord. And the first is going to be found in Matthew 6.33. Now, we, you know, it's so funny, we're, we're so often, I already know that scripture, well, you may know it, but we're gonna we're still gonna go through it and give it the credence that it's that it's worthy of. Now, what we need to first get into is is I want to start in let's see here. I want to start well, I'll come back to that one. In in Matthew 6:33, it says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So when we look at today, and as we're seeking first his kingdom today, there are things that are in his kingdom that you will not get if you do not seek. As you begin to set aside the swipe life and move into seeking first his kingdom, you'll see things different. Now, when I say a swipe life, I was in a conversation with someone last night and I said, do you realize how, how much we've turned our, our lives into swipe? Not wipe, but swipe. We probably should wipe a little bit more, but, but swipe. And we, we swipe to make a purchase, swipe to find love. Nope, 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 nope. Too short, too fat, too bald, too skinny, too mm 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 mm. No, we we swipe, we scroll the Bible. We just swipe chapters instead of reading all the way through with the hand Bible or handheld, printed, written. Well, you get the idea. A tangible Bible. 
everything's become just a swipe. We swipe through to see messages, to see text message. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Swipe, 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 swipe. And, and within that, you can start to see what's, what's really missing in the essence of our lives. As you begin to set aside and really reflect, Lord, am I seeking first your kingdom? We, we, we may need to see and really start off with what is your kingdom, which I've been in a nine month series on my Thursday night calls about kingdom and what is God's kingdom? How do we advance God's kingdom? What's the difference between church and God's kingdom? What are we doing? What's the level of authority? The seven pillars within any kingdom. How do we operate? What's our authority? Who are the remnant? How, what are we doing? What did Jesus say? What did the apostles do? How do they do all of these things? That's where life living is. What's happening is you don't even need to seek the world to not be seeking God's kingdom. You have to seek and purpose it, which means you are actively moving in this direction. See, just because you, you may say, well, I'm not seeking the devil. No, but if you're not seeking God's kingdom, you're not seeking anything and it'll seek after you. You will be mastered by something if you don't master it. So when, when, we, when I started reflecting on celebrating life, I know you think you're going somewhere. I'm just going to stay right here. It, it, became, it became something that in celebrating and living ignited for eternity, it means you're purposefully doing something. You are active in the process. And so I'm going to share with you some things today that, that I've walked through and how exactly we do that. But that is the first thing. Seek first his kingdom. But you have to first recognize whether or not you're actually doing it. My second point that, that I want to tell you is found in John. And I didn't write the scripture down. Go, go figure, right? It should be. Oh, that's Acts. But it's John 15. Now... <laughs> okay, here we go. That's the Holy Spirit. That is that. Okay, John 15. I've got it all highlighted. I always, and I like this particular Bible, and I know some of you are probably going to, that's not a King James. I understand that. I've got, I, I've got like 84 Bibles, um, and everybody has their preference. Sometimes I just refer to this one because I know where all my notes are and my extra things that sometimes I want to share. So we can just set down the religious judgment for a moment because it doesn't give you peace to be judging other people about what Bible. I mean, it's really not your business. But And I understand, yes, I have a King James, and, and it's actually right over here. But, but for this, the scripture is going to really be the same. So we can all read along and we can all get the gist of it because it's the same spirit. So let's just move by, by the same spirit and we'll get it. Amen. All right. So John 15, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now this also backs up, and I don't, I'll have to find out what this particular scripture is, but what I want to share with you is this, is, is that when, when we look at, at how we are going forward, he gave you his peace. When, when you look at people that are really living, their countenance is different. They walk in a different way. They are not bound up in the ways and means of the world. They're at peace. They're at peace with who they are, what they've accomplished, where they're going, why they're going. They're living a different way. Now, I'm just going to set her down. This was leading into one of my other other points, but I'll come back to this as I put her down. We'll see how far she gets today. Her eyes are, she's like stumping a little bit more, but it'll be okay. So when it comes to peace, he gave it to you because he had it to give. If you have no peace, think about what you bring around everyone else. It surely is not peace. When you are living life ignited for eternity, you have to be aware not only of your peace, 
but the peace lacking in others that they want to bring to you. Because if you are not aware of it, their nonsense will invade your life. And it gets us into a little bit of spiritual warfare. But in order to celebrate life, we need to walk in peace. And there's no celebration of life, which is what the enemy is really trying to do. The enemy is trying to bring forth, and he's doing such a great job of it, through division. Through division. And you will find that, that, that the more peace you have, the more people get bothered by it. I used to be one of those people. Oh, you happy people, especially at Christmas. And I worked retail to pay my way through college. And all those happy people that were shopping in the mall, I hated them all because I was not at peace with myself and the fact that I didn't have family. And it was a struggle. Now, now it's kind of funny because there are those days that I rejoice that I don't have all the drama that, I, that a lot of people I know do. I'm like, woo, Lord, I'll pray for you. <laughs> However, when, when we come to being at peace, you cannot be in the world doing what the world does and have peace because they do not coincide. They don't. They are two opposing kingdoms. One is of peace. One rules out of chaos. That is their mantra okay, rule out of disorder and chaos, and they sow confusion, and every single thing that is moved forward within what they sow will not bring you at peace, and the reason is that you will never have enough, be good enough, you will never look pretty enough, your hair will never be thick enough, you will, you will never be muscly enough, your car, no, you know what, American cars, they're just terrible, you got to have a German one, because that, that was brought in in the 50s, the ideology to change the perception of the people in the land, and so, you know, you, you can't, that's just diminishing, so you can't have that, and if you don't have this, and you know what, if you do not have that nip, tuck, and suck, well, then you just are not with it, and, and if you do this, then it, you're, you can kind of see where it's all, all invasive all the time. You have to come to the place of looking at what is going to bring me peace. Now, we know that even if you move locations, if you are not in peace, you will not have peace because peace is from within. He gave you his peace. He died so you could have peace. And so when we look in the natural world, yes, we live on this earth. So what are the things that you can do to be at peace? For me personally, and this is getting into just natural solutions, okay, and I'm going to share with you as we go along, but, but some things I have to have peace and it's a fight to get it because because in ministry there's always needs and we deal with so many issues of death and problem and marriage problems and loneliness problems and COVID quarantine problems and, and faith problems and, and hearing from God situations and I and when I say problems I I look at they're really not problems because we don't have problems we have opportunities for solutions and he is our solution and so I I operate in a different way where when anywhere I go I'm in ministry and anywhere you go you are in ministry they're hurting people everywhere so you have to be really careful about where you go because if you are not really prayed up people can destroy your peace and your joy and so some of the things that that I do is I have some things that really bring peace to me and and it sounds really funny, but when we look at the senses, see, touch, taste, smell, hear. So when it comes to smell, oh my goodness, I just love this perfume. It smells so great. It's disconnected and I've got this much left and I, or it's discontinued rather. Um, but the smell, <laughs> oh, it's just so peaceful and it just smells so good and so uh love it when the lord when the lord presented to me to create an anointing oil line it was it's such that i could sit for hours and just put all these fragrances together with the essential oils and and it's not about the yes they have the healing properties but it was just the aroma and oh my gosh this is just it's just so oh i just need this ever flowing it's like it just smells so good with the sandalwood and oh I don't even know what else but you know think about think about the fragrances some people like to smell funk and they're okay living in the stink of funk I'm not I, I don't I don't really 
like that. I don't find it endearing. I don't really enjoy that. So the sense of smell, the 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 candles. Now this kind of fits in twofold thing. And and this, you know, when I bought this candle, and yes, it's a candle and 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 it it was really the 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 sight, the things of beauty. When you look around what you're looking at, if you don't like what you're looking at, change your atmosphere. Because if you don't change your atmosphere, it will change you. And so first what grabbed me was just was just the the packaging. And and this is where think about yourself as the package that God created. And and you're just so beautiful. And the essence that God has put of himself within you. Oh, just the fragrance of life, the fragrance of everything that we do and how we go about. And the enemy is just like beep, beep, beep. So so when I saw this candle, um, it's like, oh, I just love the packaging. And I like the packaging just because I like the just the essence of what it is. But then it's like, oh, just so pretty. And then the sides of the box, like there's no detail. I love details. But then when you open it up and they give you a card and it's not just on some cheap paper. This this is not stuff that you find at the at the cheap stores. And and so what's also awesome though is it has the velvet even like you know it's good when you can't get out and and it has oh this too just smells so good and so what happens is that i don't want to i could burn this out in a day but then it would be like oh now what do i do tomorrow i'd have to go get another one then i go broke actually i won't go broke but it smells so good i don't know the burn the burn time well it's from england okay that might be why um sometimes they give on the very bottom uh, do not burn for more than two to three hours at a time. And this is a good one because the glass is really thick. So there's a difference in the quality of things, but uh, what can you do to have peace? So the sense of, of sight, what we're, what we're looking at, the sense of smell, the, the, the things that we are moving to, what really brings you in that place of peace so that you can hear from the Lord? Those things are very, very important. And in our society, we're just so busy, not really aware of anything. Now, in with the sense of, of sight, flowers. Use nothing better than, than flowers and fresh flowers. And growing up, I had this, this fascination with flowers, but really didn't know um, all of what I learned about my biological family was that they owned a floral shop and and there's a whole lot of his history within the floral shop, but flowers will change an environment. Think about weddings where there's just flowers everywhere. Uh, even funerals, there's flowers. Flowers are resembling of life and the beauty that is around us that we so often don't really pay much attention to. Stop and look around. The aroma, the beauty is all around you and it will bring you peace. Now, a couple other things that I want to share with you that, that will always be something. When, when you look at peace and, and when you look at how you do that, what are you eating? The food matters. And what's, what's so wonderful is my mom as a new chef. He used to be the chef for Denzel Washington. And, and what's really awesome is that he takes care to plan meals of things that she likes. And, you know, I shared the testimony how she was in the hospital with sepsis. And, and I think that it was um, think other things that caused that, that that are killing many. But, but outside of that, this, this one person who's, who's using food to feed her spirit and her soul has, has transformed many things. What are you eating that's bringing you peace? Are you just going and buying whatever's on the shelf and shoveling it down as you're on your way to your next thing? Are you, are you, are you camping out at 7-Eleven? Nothing com not coming against 7-Eleven. However, are you, are you enjoying what you cook with to bring peace into your home? You know, there's a difference when you eat at a restaurant and when you eat at home. When you eat at a restaurant, many people don't look at a restaurant as a corporation. A corporation is feeding you or are you feeding you? So I have a ministry partner who has a ministry of love and he makes cookies. And, and let me just tell you, I have to be real careful because I could eat these and, and, I, and I do. <laughs> However, I have to portion them because otherwise they're just so good. And with the glass of milk, it's like, ah. Oh, it's just so good, but it's not something that you just passively eat, which is what happens often in, in, in the Western world. 
If you travel outside of, of the Western world and you really get into the culture of, of the Italians, the Greeks, you get into the, and go to Spain and Portugal and Malta and Monaco and you really start to see food, you'll see food as, as something so different than what comes out of a box that you shove down on, on, on the way to the next thing that you don't even know what you're doing or what it tastes like and you don't remember what you ate, but it remembers you and it remembers as it's doing what it's doing to you. And so, so you know, I, I, I find that when I'm really looking about how I'm celebrating life, that if life is too um, hectic to enjoy good food, then I will not be at peace because I'm not really seeking God's kingdom. I'm seeking corporate kingdom to feed me, and I'm not really aware. And, and so we have to really stop and look at what, what am I, what am I, what's feeding my spirit and what's feeding my soul, which the soul is the appetite. And we've talked about that before. What's really feeding me? Now that's in the natural, but are you feeding yourself the word of God? Are you feeding yourself that which will, which will birth life? Or are you feeding yourself bitterness, anger, negativity, doom, gloom, media, fake, this, that, 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 doctor death, doctor this, doctor, all of this stuff that is killing you you're going to have no peace. Now, when we, when we continue in this pattern, you know, everywhere you go, you have a way and an opportunity to be at peace. It is your responsibility to get and keep the peace that you have. If you do not do that, it is, it is your fault when you don't have it. He already gave it to you. It is there. What are you doing with it? So still in this, in the area of, of sight, you know, in my personal life, in a professional life, yes, we, we have an appropriateness of, of corporate things. However, I'm, I'm not falling of the prey that in order to be, to be in the corporate world that I need to look like a man because I'm not a man. And, and I surely am not going to shave my head to prove that I can be in a man's world because you know what, that would just not prove anything. It would, it would prove to be cold in the winter. That's just what I'm going to say about that. I don't need to prove anything. God created me. God created you. When you come to be at peace, that you can be powerful and pretty at the same time as a woman, there's peace in that. You don't have to go and fit to a culture that is not going to like you anyway, that will eat you up and spit you out. When you move in God's kingdom and his culture and you cultivate who you are in Christ and you move, it you'll get everything done. And so for me, when it comes time to work, there's there's things that... that I want to bring peace, especially when when I deal at any given time with 150 to three to 400 students in at the college level. I have a lot of students, a lot of course load, and and sometimes it's it's a lot. However, they're learning and they're growing, but I want to make my schedule something that I enjoy putting together. And so, yes, it's pink. I have a Hobonichi. I, I love it. Some of you are like Hobo, who? Hobonichi. It's a great planner and, and it works great. And then I have my extra notebooks that, that, I, that I love to write in. And what's great is they fit right in here so I can keep myself organized with great pens. The pens are are wonderful. I go through a lot of pens, but it makes the experience. That's what we're missing. We're missing the experience of the things of life. We're not paying attention to anything, and that's all on purpose. You swipe, you click, one click order, and you're done. You don't even know what you've done. You've just done it, and you move on to the next thing that you don't even know what you're moving on to, but you're just crossing everything off on a list, and then you're just really not living at all. We need to stop and pay attention to that because life is too short. And I have one more thing that I'll share with you in just a second because I want to move on to my next point. In order to be really living ignited for eternity, you're going to have to protect your heart. In the book of Proverbs, we're given this. And the book of Proverbs is filled with so much wisdom. And, and you know, when, when we really look at how we're living... Oh, I've got a couple other things I want to share, but I'll come back to one of those in just a second. You want to guard your heart, for out of the wellspring of it there is life. So 423 of Proverbs, and, and it reads this. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Now, what's interesting in my comments, I told you I always have comments. Now, everything would flow from your heart because that's where the blood pumps through. You have four ventricles in your heart, just as there were four women who birthed the four tribes of Israel, four seasons. 
And so when we look at it, it is our responsibility to guard your heart. When you walk with an unguarded heart or an unforgiving, bitter, angry heart, those health issues will come forth. They will be exhibited and you will look like the spirit you're operating out of. You operate out of a spirit of, of anger, you'll look like it. If you are in ministry and you are operating out of a spirit of resentment or bitterness, guess what will happen? Is that it will be like a can of mace spraying that bitterness. And I learned that many years ago when there was an, a, uh, a ministry that, that I don't even know, it was a pastor's call that he had weekly and I was on one of these calls and, and, and I just, it was, everyone left just so absolutely burdened and, and it was tough and I remember asking the Lord and that's when the Lord revealed what really was happening and he loosed me from that because it was really, it was really having an impact on me and I wasn't really aware how much at that time of what other people pour into your life. What are they just slopping around? And many people are just slopping it like they're sloppy cooks and, and, and it's just they're sloppy in their lives and they're sloppy with their words and they're sloppy with everything. And if you are not aware of how important your heart is and you are and your heart is beating incorrectly from these things, you need to clean that up because you are not living. In God's kingdom, there's life and there's a, a hope for the future. The enemy has no hope because he's only looking to live one more day. He just looks for this day. And so when you're looking at what brings you a peaceful heart, the other two things I forgot, I just have to share these because ladies, I know that you will really get this. When you go to sleep at night, what is your bedding like? So when it comes to, when it comes to like the touch, and, and, and this is why, this is why studies show that, that what we touch, especially when it comes to animals, that the heart rate will go down 20%. And I had a neighbor years ago that suffered a lot of anxiety. They were, they, they were going through a lot of things. He was, he was, um, mil retired military and, and, and she'd gone through so many things and, and so she loved being around Olive because she just, and Olive's down here sleeping, but it was the softness. And, and, and I started studying more about what we have around us that calms us. And when you think about your bedding and you think about how it just breathes peace into your heart. And when you look and feel your pillows and, and of course, big, I mean, look how these are some fabulous English pillows. Just love, love, love them. And so when we're looking at, at what brings, oops, I just knocked her on the head. It's okay. It's just me. She's like, well, what's happening? It's okay. Go back to sleep. All right, it's all good. Hey. So when you're looking at your heart, what is happening in your heart? What, what is, what really is happening? What are you doing to care for it? What are you doing to exercise? When I, when I reflect on exercise myself, I, I, I was a pro not a professional dancer, but a competitive dancer in, in many genres of, of dance. And when I, when I left that to move into new seasons, I, I, I was a runner. I did all of these different things, but, and a swimmer and all these things. And now it's like, okay, I kind of dig the rebounder and, and, and have one of those where, where you just put on the music and just jump. And you feel like a little kid, which is fabulous because we're still told to be childlike. And I'm building the muscles in my heart. I'm building up instead of tearing down. What are you doing to guard your heart? You need to be in that place because if you don't, it'll get hurt. And you don't want to just give it away to the next whomever. You need to be protecting it. And right now, even more so. Because when we're looking at this world of where we are, things are happening so fast. And the rate of death from, from the start of when people were getting these injections has increased more so than before this particular time. And as people are just dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping, and we're going to be entering into this new season. I don't want to call it a season of death, but we know, and I've already had the prophetic dreams that I've shared years ago about the mass quantities of, of bodies that I've seen that were just stacked uh, very high. And, and within, within that, if I'm not protecting my heart and staying in the presence of the Lord and living my life in peace and I'm sucked into the worldly way of life, my heart will get hurt. My heart will grow cold. My heart would be like Pharaoh. 
and, and stubborn and hard and cold. I would be stiff-necked like Stephen. And I can't afford that because there's a life to live. There will always be poor among you. There will always be depravity in the world. And, and you have to see, as we're really looking at what's happening, that we need to be ever so careful because there is so much division and there is so much on the side of moving toward death. And what I mean by this is that it's, it's absolutely incredible what is happening in America right now. And what I mean by this, never, never mind the, the, at the upper, upper echelons, what I, what I want to get into is, is, this, is this, this movement towards death and the, and the states that, that are on the side of life, how much the purveyors of death are quickly moving in. They're moving in to write these bills that will, that will deny counsel for pregnant women to save their babies. Like they are all on board with pushing death. We need to stay in a place where we celebrate life and the enemy is moving ever so fast to celebrate death. It's kind of funny because, because when you really step back and look at this, like the people that are pushing death, what's going to happen when it knocks on their door? Are they going to beg to live or are they going to celebrate their own passing? Because maybe they should be. They should be, they should be celebrating where they're going because you know what? It's not going to go so well for them unless they repent. They're not even aware of what's, what heart they're trying to take from, from women. The war against women is so huge right now. And it's to destroy the reproductive system so that there can be no future generations. To block seed from being sown so women can, can give birth. There's so much deception and we need to guard our hearts and stay in his word. And it continues on to say, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from you. Because the world is corrupt, everything that they say and do is corrupt. There's nothing good that comes out of them. The world is not your friend. Do we go into the world? Yes, we do. Why? Because we're going to win souls. We are winning souls through this ministry. We are out doing the work. We are in, in it and in it and we are doing the work and people are coming to Christ. Muslims are coming to Christ. Hindus are coming to Christ. Homeless are coming to Christ. People are coming back to Christ in the name, in the name of Yeshua. They are coming back. They're recognizing, I need a Savior. I need to live. You need to live while you can. And, and it's extremely challenging when you lose a loved one and everyone else is just so flippant about it. We become desensitized in our hearts. We've got to guard our hearts. And, and I will argue this, that we have become desensitized because we are desensitized. And you might say, well, not really. Well, you know what? If we are not desensitized, then how can it be that, 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 that young teenagers mocked and laughed and put on social media a man drowning, begging for help? They laughed at him. If we are not desensitized, then why would, why would two carloads of women get out in Florida at a stoplight and start fighting each other? If we are not desensitized, why would it be that a young woman who worked in a nursing home who watched one of the residents die of a heart attack, put it on TikTok and say, this is what death looks like? If we are not desensitized, why are we allowing our youth to shoot one another in Chicago at the rate of almost 17 a day? And if we are not desensitized, and this just came out, why is it that 42% of men admitted that they would have sex with a robot? A sexual female robot, which I don't know how you can have a female robot that's just a robot. 42% of men said or admitted that they would have sex with a robot. Don't tell me we're not desensitized. That is the ploy. That is the plot. To get your heart separated from your body so you think and have no emotion. We have been, we have become so immune to life. We have become immune to living. We have become immune to feeling. We've become immune to the sanctity of what is passing us by and we don't even see it. And we know this because our politicians are the biggest pushers of death right now. And it doesn't matter what province, what territory, what state you are in. It is being pushed. And it's being pushed. And when you stand for life, you are the one mocked for. And you know what? They're going to get theirs because the wicked will not inherit the land. But we surely will. And we so shall live in it. And we so shall weep what we sow. And they will reap the debt that they are heaping on others. And we have to recognize what is going on in my heart. How am I treating people? It's incredible to me how legalistic we have become in our self-righteousness. Sit down. You are no better than anyone else, regardless of what color you are or are not, or what fake car you drive, or what fake stuff. You just spend all your money on fake things, wanting people to think that you're rich when you're not even entry level. 
give me a break, sit down, guard your heart, get to the basics. Yes, I shared some materialistic things that just smell great and are pretty, but you know what, set that aside. If we were all sitting in one room wearing the same exact thing, who then are we? That's why uniforms in the schools are have always been a great idea because they remove the class and people can be people and kids can just be kids without, without the inferiority complex that comes with many. We need to start taking care of ourselves and strengthen our hearts. And we have to do it now. The, the next point that I want to take you to is found in Proverbs. Also, this is Proverbs 29. I think I have my scriptures correct. Proverbs 29. I'll show this to you. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions. Now, when we begin to look at this, wisdom as instructions, but I want to also then take you to writing it down in Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2. And you know what? I'm just going to do it the easy way, if you will. Because I want to show you. It says write it down. Habakkuk 2. I'm close. <laughs> Can I not read the words on my page? Oh, wrong way. There we go. What did he say? Habakkuk 2, you've already heard this. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on, on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It's, it speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it, and it certainly, and it will certainly come and will not delay. So, write it down. What I started doing, and writing it down, and yes, the ministry has a vision, and it took almost nine months. You know, people just come up with a mission, mission statement. Well, it's a vision and a mission, and they're two very different things. And, and so now I help other ministries that, that are spirit-led to not just go and just copy and paste what another ministry is doing because what God is doing for you is for you and you have your own set of things that God is going to do through you for his ministry. And, and so I'm, I'm a writer and always have been. I published actually my first book when I was in uh, sixth grade. Yeah, I know, right? Overachiever. But one of the things that I started doing was this. So I have this here, and this was like the first page. I'll just show you. Prayer, prayer and promise. And I started writing it down. Live boldly, dream without limits, and never give up. And I can't wait to see what God has for me. And so what I've done, and this was just, like at that time, I just... This was just a cool notebook. This, I don't normally like to flip the, the flip over the top notebooks, and I and I love my moleskin notebooks. But I've had this one for, I probably should just continue to use it and finish it, because if I've had it for so long, there's an issue. However, what I've done is I write what I'm believing God for, the scripture and the prayer, and the date answered, so I can see the vision. And and it when I wrote this down, it was, it was August 4th of 2016 when I met my biological father, or when I spoke with my biological father's family. I've been believing for that for so many years and it was all there. And so it was just pretty awesome to go back and reflect in that time. But when we write it down, what that will do is it will narrow you in. You won't be all over the place. And so when you write down the the vision for your life what god do you have for me what are those things that i look forward to what you're going to see that that god is so good and you're going to see anything that isn't in the direction that you're going you you won't entertain when i was in college i had a goal and i was able in college to work full time sometimes i worked three jobs i went to school full time and i also had a full time internship and the way was made. Anything that was not in that direction, I did not entertain. Because everyone else will always have an agenda for your life. They always will. And if you don't know the agenda for your life from God, then you'll be living someone else's agenda. 
And guess what? You will not be living ignited for eternity. You will be wishing for everything else because it won't be good. Because it won't be from God. And so I start writing things down. But here's the other thing that I also do is this. Is that I write down, this one here was from, um, I write down things I'm thankful for. And what this does is it helps keeps me in my vision to see where God is taking me. So in, this was June 6, uh, 16th in 2014, 11.45 p.m. I have 32 things that I was thankful for on that day. That, that your word, you love me, that I don't ever have to go back to a Bible study that I was at for free will. That no person will have authority over me to hurt me. That, that I'm thankful for my future. I'm thank you for, I thank you for new beginnings. I thank you for, for living in forgiveness. I thank you for the TV network. I thank you for my sponsors and advisors. I thank you for Darnell. I thank you for Miss Oliver. I thank you for my home. I thank you for being my provider. I thank you for, for prosperity and abundance. I thank you for the divine meeting of my husband. And all of these things that, that, that I'm thankful for keep me seeing that that narrowed vision and this goes back to 2014 and they go back even further but what it does is now when I'm praying I can begin to pray in the vision that I'm seeing while thanking him for what he's already done which means that which is in the world will not be able to enter because I'm seeking first his kingdom and I'm at peace because I see what he's done See, the enemy wants to take everything that, that you've already had or that, he's give, that the God has given you and just, just kind of move it away so you don't see it, so you don't, so you don't remember. So then you live in the place of, well, God hasn't done anything. Well, God's been carrying you for the last how many years? You just can't see it. We have to get off of ourselves. And when you move in a vision, you're going somewhere. But what happens is most people are drifting, just drifting along. No, that's not living. It's not living, so you need to write it down. I'm, I got plans for my birthday, and, and let me tell you, I'm not sharing, not yet, but you know what? It's going to be great, and I'm planning it now because I'm never going to have any birthdays like I've had in my past. I've already told you about the weird guy wanting to look at my feet and the candle at Walgreens and, and how another time I was left to pay the bill by my own birthday piece of birthday cake at dinner. No, no, and no, I've got a new vision. i got a new plan, and it is going to be glorious, and, and that's just how that is. And maybe many of you have had some, some really sucky, terrible birthdays, and you could say, you know what? Write down the vision. What is your birthday going to be? Because it's a celebration of life, and you need to celebrate it, which is why I dressed up for the occasion today because you know what in this when you write it down every day is a day to celebrate you do not need to wait for thanksgiving to use your fine china you do not need to wait to pull out the the finest of of the the goblets that you like to drink from oh it's a wine goblet yeah drink your orange juice from it and enjoy it and you know what you're going to enjoy the experience because when you go to a fine dining restaurant you normally don't just slap all the food in your mouth you actually taste it and it tastes like food. <laughs> it just does, because that's what it is. When you drink from the big goblets, whether it's water, and you look at you look at the crystal ware, and you look at everything that they have set before you, it's an experience. The lighting, the, the fabrics, every single thing is an experience. When you live life as an experience, not that you don't own anything like society is pushing us to. Don't own anything, don't own a car because you just need to Uber, and don't, don't ever own a home, which most articles now about home ownership are negative that's because they want to buy the land so you'll never own anything you need to own you need to own become an owner a servant to god but an owner in the land and and as you see that then you can build your own gardens you can move in these in these regular ways it, that that are really biblical norms not worldly norms we're getting out of the worldly norms moving into biblical norms to have a biblical worldview writing down the vision and I only have two points left, and I really pray that this is helping you move along in, in getting to a new place in your life because your relationship with the Lord is going to be the only thing that is going to save you. And I know that it might seem like I'm sharing a lot of things in the natural, but yes, that it has an impact. And for those that have been isolated and cooped up and all of these things for far too long, you gotta, you got to ignite and move in your environment in the best way that you can. Maybe you need to paint a wall. Honey, you get out and you paint. I paint. You can see I painted this. I paint. It's it's therapeutic. I can't really paint all the paintings that I want to paint because I don't have the space for some of the things and 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 I need a bigger space that than the whole the whole space the ceiling will probably be painted and all that, but it brings peace and joy. What brings peace and joy? Which leads me to laughter. Okay? You need to laugh. You need to start laughing. Laughter. 
and I want to share with you something, one story, and I thank you for listening to this. But first, we're going to find this good for I'm going to share with you a story that still to this day, I just got to tell this one because it's hilarious to me. 17. 22 of Proverbs. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit drives up the bones. Laughter is the best medicine. We need to laugh. It's okay. It's okay. God's got this. He's got this. He's got this. Hear it again. He's got this. He's got this. He's got this. It's okay. It is all okay. It is okay. God's got this. Laugh. Just get out and laugh. If you really want to watch a movie to laugh at, it's called Babies. And, and it came out many years ago and it was just, it, and it's probably not a man movie. However, when I watched it so many years ago, it was just the experience of, of babies right after they were born and what moms were going through on different continents. And these little babies were just so precious. And some of the things they did, you know, they couldn't stay up. I mean, it was just really funny. But you know, in all, in all honesty, we need to laugh. And I want to share with you about a brother that was part of our ministry since 2012. And, and I remember the first time that I met him, he came to Dallas for ministry training. And he tells me about this, this story, and he says, yeah, so I ran over a guy. <laughs> you got to really start to question when someone starts off a story like that. Yeah, so I ran over a guy. It's just, you know, it's Tuesday. I ran over a guy. He said, I didn't know that I did. He said, I didn't quite know what was happening. He said, but I ran over a guy. He said, I just, I backed up and didn't see anything. Didn't, I didn't hear anything. Didn't see anything. And, but I thought, you know, and then all of a sudden he's like, all these, all, all these ladies get out and start yelling at me. He said, I didn't know what happened. I get out of my car. I'm like, what did I do? He says, they're like the guy. And, and so he gets, he gets out of his SUV. He goes and he looks, he's like, oh, hey, talk to him. What are you doing there? <laughs> he ran over, he ran over the town doctor. He was like, what are you doing there? He got ran over. He hit his bike and our ministry brought her, hit, hit the guy, hit the doctor on his bike. And he's like, what are you doing down there? The doctor was okay, perfectly fine. And, and he says, so I asked him, I said, can, can we not file an insurance claim? And, and he says, oh, we might, I'll file the claim. He said, oh, well, got him up and he was fine and, and he says well I'll see you for my appointment next week <laughs> just ran over someone I find that and the way that he used to tell it was just so the way that he told it was so funny I you know I, I ran over a guy <laughs> what have you done <laughs> I ran over a guy what have you done what are the things that, that, that make you laugh I remember when I lived in Canada um, someone dear in my life was engaged and he at that time had been living in, in Washington State and was coming back to, uh, to stay and he had to stay with me for, for a few days and, and what's crazy was that he was scared of Smurfs <laughs> if you know what Smurfs are they're, they're funny blue little demons with little hats that's what I now call them but I found one I found a life size Smurf at a garage sale and I bought the Smurf and so when he came in the guest bedroom I put it at the foot of his bed <laughs> I like a good joke and I like a good prank and a good one and uh, I just waited I just waited and you could hear I mean, and he just, he just cussing out the Smurf and he just panicked over his stuff, Smurf. I find that funny. And so, you, what do you find funny? It was absolutely hysterical. A 29-year-old man, so scared of a Smurf. But even better yet, that I found a life-size Smurf. See, some of these things might seem really stupid. And I get that. But sometimes, you know, not running over a guy, that's not stupid, that, that's a little concerning. However, we've got to laugh. We've got to laugh. We've got to laugh. 
And my final point is the fellowship that you keep. If you hang out with fools, you will become one. You need to look at the people in your life. Are they lifting you up or are they bringing you down? Are they taking you places or are they moving you away from? If you have people in your life that do nothing but complain and murmur and grumble, and if you have people in your life that treat people terrible, you need to get them out of your life because they will, they will treat you the way they treat everyone else. And they're abusive and they don't know it and you need to get them out of your life. When you go out with people, how do they treat the staff? How do they treat the waiters? How do they treat, how do they speak to people? If they are rude, get away from them. Get away from them. You do not have time to celebrate life with rude people because they will bring you down. And you do not have time to become a fool. And so when you look at the company that you keep, you may have a small circle. But you know what? When you've got the smallest of circles with the bestest of the best, you're blessed. And I want you to know right now, you are blessed. Excuse me. Because the company that you keep, Jesus, the Lord, God, the Holy Spirit, you're in the best company that you could be in. And as we come full circle, as you seek first his kingdom, as you begin to be at peace, and you recognize that you need to guard your heart, and you need to write down that vision, and you need to have a laugh and fellowship with those people that, 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 that are going to be moving in that same direction, you will have a full life in the name of the Lord. You will have a full life. You will be doing life with people fellowshipping, enjoying food, experiencing what you've never experienced before because you weren't awakened to it. Your senses were not alive to it. It's time for us to wake up. It's time to move in a way that, that we are able to see it. And you know, I want to share with you, you know, you guys know that I was gifted this, this beautiful harp. And I've still, uh, my nail, my nails are long and I'm not the best harpist yet, but you know what? There's something about the sound of it. There's something about the peace of the Lord. There's something about life that we've been missing. And we need to come back to the place of life. We need to get first and foremost in front of Jesus. We need to come to that place where we stop, where we set away the, the phone. It's okay, it's still be there iPhone will tell you where you're at. If you don't case, you don't know. And the sad thing is that it's lost. You you mis misspell God in your in your in in your uh, texting, and it won't even correct it. It'll give you everything else but God. That's how scared of God they really are. So we just pray for them, and we keep going, recognizing we don't need a phone to fill us. We need to live, and that's what we're gonna do. Woo. Told you, Father. We ask today, we ask, Father, that you teach us how to live. Teach us what it really means to take a breath. Teach us, Father, how to fellowship. Show us how to breathe the air. Father, let us set aside the nanochemicals and pick up the roses. Father, help us to, to set down the fast food and pick up the finer food. Help us to set down the solo cups and pick up the china and celebrate today. Father, help us to recognize that we don't need to live in pajamas, that we can put on our best because it's Tuesday, it's Monday, it's Thursday. That we don't need to wait for a day to do anything, that today is the day because this is the day that we were given. So Father, let us, let us not lose it. Let us not forsake it. Father, teach us how to really enjoy what's around us. And Father, we thank you that wherever we go, you're with us. So Father, today, we just thank you for the celebration of life. We thank you for every breath that you've given us. Father, today we ask that you just be the love that we need. We already have you, but we thank you that we need you more today than we did yesterday, and we will need you more tomorrow. So, Father, calm us down. Bring us to a place of inner peace with you. Fill the appetite within our souls. Help us recognize that what we're really craving is for you to have more of us. We praise you, Father. We thank you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you know what? If you don't know Jesus, you need to know him. He changed my life forever. I was a homeless 15-year-old girl. I didn't know a lot. And I didn't even know at age five when I prayed that he would be my escape. I didn't know what I prayed, and I didn't even know until August 4th of 2016 how I knew to pray that prayer. 
There have been people praying for you that you would come to know Christ. And if you're watching this message wherever you are, we've been praying for you. You are that important to Jesus. And he's been waiting for you to come to know him. He already knows you. And he is excited for a relationship with you. He loves you. He loves you. Ooh, that's terrible. But he loves you. Are you going to accept him today? Because now's your opportunity. How do you accept him? You simply stop what you're doing. Say, Jesus, I don't know you, but I know that I need you. And you've already made a mess of your life. We don't even need to hide that. But you just tell him how much you love him and that you need him. I need you, Jesus. Please be the center of my life. Please take over. Please guide me through the guilt, the loneliness, the remorse, the mess that I've made. Please help me. I can't do this alone. And he'll be there. It's that simple. Pray it in your own words. Just pray it in your own words. I don't like templates for that because I want you to talk to him just as you would talk to me. Tell him your struggles. They're real and it's okay. You just talk to him and he'll be there. He's been waiting for you. And as you come to that place, your life will never be the same. Mine wasn't. And you'll live life a new way and you'll be so glad that you did. And so as you go forth, rejoice. Those of you that know Jesus, know him more. Celebrate life with the Holy Spirit. Toast today. Take communion today. Celebrate life today because you're not given tomorrow. You don't know. None of us do. And it doesn't matter age. None of us are immune to what is to come. And so we want to cherish every breath. Cherish every single thing that you do today. And as we go forth, know that we pray every day. We pray at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. We pray the prayer watches and we pray one nation to another to another under the, under the name of Yeshua, we pray. And I invite you to pray with us. Doesn't matter where you are. You simply dial 214-586-0411. Dial the number, hit mute on your phone, and we pray. I invite you and I welcome you. And if you have prayer requests, we also take care of those as well. And so we're here. We're here to stand with the Lord and help you stand as well. It's an exciting time, and it is a time for us believers to be standing, living, ignited for eternity, and it starts now. For more, you can go to julieblairministries.org. There's so much information, messages, words of encouragement, blogs, many things to help you grow and to come to walk in the fullness of the Lord. I pray that you do, and if we can help you in any way, just let us know. And I would also like to know in the comments, share what you're doing to stay celebrating life. What are those things that you are doing in these times? Because I know it's got to be good. If it's from God, it's got to be good. So what are you doing? How do you celebrate? Share those things. Know we're praying for you. I love you dearly. Miss Olive loves you. She's sleeping. And, and so God bless you. Love you so much. And I look forward to what he has next for us. Bye, everybody. God bless you.